Bam! Hey kids, welcome back. Happy Easter. It is Sunday. Easter Sunday. So, um, I've been posting a lot of uh, gallery build pictures this week just because Mama finally caught up with all my building. Um, so yeah, there's been some stuff. But anyway, I wanted to do a quick quadcopter kitchen. I've been experimenting with um, hydro dipping this weekend. And uh, I think I got it down. My brother um, Lincoln down south, he does my custom paint jobs, as you all know. Uh, like the color changing, transition stuff, whatever. Um, and he also does my hydro dips, but I thought, you know, he's always busy. Uh, the little shit and half-ass stuff, I'll do, and then uh, maybe send them to him for a clear coat, because he definitely does a better job on clear coating. Uh, but I wanted to do a quickie, uh, hopefully this will only be about 20 minutes. So the first thing you're going to need, masking tape. Trust me when I say get masking tape. You're going to need a bucket or a bowl, depending on how big you're doing it. I actually use a really big um, Tupperware size. Hang on a second. Let me grab it. One of these things. Get it at Walmart. I only am planning on dipping quadcopter stuff, so I didn't get a real deep. It's only, you know, eight inches, six inches by whatever big that is. Um, enough to fit a frame in. Uh, but if you're doing something little, just a big bowl will work. And that's what we're going to use for this because I want to be able to get everything in shot. You're going to need this. You're going to need your hydro dip film. Um, this is some leftover that I have that I'll show you. Uh, cutting board, razor blade, and you have to have your hydro dip activator. Uh, I use hydrovator. <laughs> Whatever. It's all the same shit. Um, do not do this inside. Your old lady will leave you. It's really, I think it smells actually kind of good. <laughs> But, you know, trust me. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is determine what you're dipping. In our case, I'm going to dip a camera housing. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. It's over there drying. I primed it. Where's my primer? Damn it. Anyway, I'll show you that in a second. Let me go find beer. Was right in front of me. Anyway, I've been using this Rust-Oleum uh, Universal Bonding Primer, and this stuff will bond to just about anything. Works pretty good. Now, the one thing to take into consideration when you're doing this stuff is if you have, I've got a bunch of hydro dips in the house, but if you have like a color with a lot of spaces, actually, let's take the one we're going to use. It's basically engine components. See, I don't know if you can see that real well, but cam shafts, crank shafts, things like that. It's very, very cool. But uh, the problem is, if you look at it, whatever you put it over is going to kind of come through like that. So if you wanted the components to look like Yoda's here, whatever, I'm assuming that's green, um, that's what it's going to look like. So you have to take into consideration your base coat under your film. We're going to use this film, which actually isn't even good for a small part because you can see all the detail in this. Um, it's actually better, like if we wrap it around white, just so you guys, this is the one thing a lot of people don't go over is the base coat. What do you use? I'm using white. Silver would probably be the best for this because then the engine parts would look silk. Um, but my case here, this is just for, I'm not going to actually use this camera housing anyway. Um, we're just going to make it white. No big deal. Uh, it doesn't even have to be primer. I do recommend that you scuff the, whatever you're doing, be it carbon fiber, plastic, whatever, with a, just a, a tiny scuffing, like with 220 grit sandpaper or something like that. When you get your film, what you want to do, you can, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. See how that side's kind of dull and that side's kind of shiny? Usually, shiny side goes down in the water. Now, usually. Uh, all the ones I've tried are that way, but you never know. Um, so what you do, I got this trick from a dude online. Lick your fingers, lick two fingers on a bare piece like this and the side that sticks is a side that goes down into the water that fucking is important do not do it the other way bad things will happen now what we're gonna do i'm doing basically a it's a what is it a foxier mic uh normal hs11 camera housing um so what you want to do then this part is probably the most important part that a lot of people don't don't hit on you want to make sure the part is going to fit. You want to cut a piece, okay? Now you think, okay, well, no shit. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Now, normally, if I was doing a frame, which I've done a couple now, uh, I would actually lay the frame on there. And you want to have, you know, you don't want to waste it, but you want to make sure you have enough, obviously. So uh, I would go at least, like, for something like a camera housing, at least a half inch all the way around, no big deal. Make sure the you get up as flat as you can. 
Then, this is the part that I kept screwing up on. Uh, where's my tape? There it is. Take your tape and you're gonna make a frame. If you do not do this, what happens when you drop this in the water, it's going to dissipate, meaning stretch way the hell out. Your pattern's gonna go to shit and it's gonna be terrible. So this is how I do it. And it took me a couple uh, <laughs> moments of re revelation to figure this out. Um, where they say a moment of realization is worth a thousand prayers. Okay, This is not a hard thing to do, guys. It really isn't. But it is one of those things that if you've never done it before and you're just trying to wing it and figure it out, yeah, it can be a little headache. You want to try to get this as flat as you can. Try not to have wrinkles in it when you do this framing bit. Because if you do get wrinkles in it, you'll get air bubbles. Which you can fix, but it's still a pain in the ass. Then I usually trim it. Hang on. Sorry about that super cute daughter moment. So, um, you probably should just use normal masking tape. But this is just what I had. You know, this is this two inch shit's probably a, uh, a waste. But that's okay. It's what I had. So, do that. We're going to trim this down. And then... We're gonna do this. I like these plastic cutting boards because the tape sticks to them just enough to help you out, but it's not like totally forever. Until mama catches me using her shit, she's gonna be all mad at me. It's all right. And then we got a nice little frame. Now, usually how I do this is I try to make it so the part that I'm putting down the water, which in this case is the shiny part, is the sticky part of the tape. The only reason I do that is so I don't get confused. So I know, okay, the shiny part, which we determined was the part that goes in the water, um, I put that shiny part face down on the cutting board, then I put my tape around, then I know when I go to dip it, oh yeah, okay, sticky side down, okay? So then what we're going to do, our frame is done, that's what I call it. And what happens is, when you put, if you put this in the water without this frame, don't even try it. Okay, because what it's going to do, it'll sit there and be like, all right, cool. And then you hit it with the activator and it goes, Poof! and this piston or this crankshaft or connecting rod and piston all of a sudden is the size of a train. So that's not good. This keeps it damned up, if you will. So what we're going to do now, get rid of this. We're done. It's a very simple process. I'm going to go get a bowl of hot water. I usually make it, it's not boiling. You don't have to get that crazy, but I usually go about as hot as my tap goes, which is pretty fucking hot. It's, it'll steam when it's cold out. Um, and then I bring it out here and I just kind of let it settle and I'll go grab the camera piece and I'll show you the rest. Be right back. All right, bam, there we go. So just a bowl of reason. This is like not even as hot as I usually do it, but you don't have to have it boiling fucking hot. Okay. Uh, if it's, if it's room temperature, I mean, usually 75, 80 degrees is probably the best that I've found. Um, but if it's room temperature, you might want to let these sit a little bit longer. Now here's the case that we're going to dip. It's a Fox ear case. I did not do a good job on the primer. See that orange peel? I put it on way too thick. Uh, the primer was actually very cold and I put it on too thick. It cracked. I don't care. This is, I'm throwing this away when we're done anyway. So, um, sticky side down right there. Try to make it so you don't get bubbles in it. Not the end of the world. If you do just like that. All right. Let it sit. Now you see it squirrel up like that. I'm going to zoom this in. Let her sit. You want it to look good and wrinkly. Yeah, just like that. If you do get air bubbles in it, you can give it a Bardwell blow. And sometimes that helps. But usually if you just lay it in there nice, you don't have that problem. So that's good enough. Shake up your activator. You don't have to give this a ton. I probably do more than you're supposed to. I don't care. There. See how those wrinkles go away? Beautiful. Okay. So this, like I said, if you're going to do a pattern like this with the engine dip, it's really better to do it on a big frame like a, a Cerebus or something that has a lot of surface area. This does not have a lot of surface area. So, But anyway, you're going to get the idea. So then what we're going to do, you can use your hand. You can use a glove. I'm just going to use, um, let's see. I, do I have anything shorter? Yeah, let's use this. It's not in the way of the camera. So I'm just going to go like that. 
And what you want to do, if you're using doing a frame, you want to dip it at about a 30 degree angle in, but since this thing's so geometrical, it, it really doesn't matter. So we're just going to go really slow and even until you're through. Give it a good shaking. Now, usually what you want to do is you want to peel this off. You don't want to get any tape back on it, but I just did it really fast. And there you go. Okay, now, this, <laughs> because it's such a small area, it didn't really come out that stellar because you can't see the design on it. Like I said, if you're gonna use this piston dip, you have to have a good design, um, something that's like striped or something like that. And as a matter of fact, I have one I just did that I'm gonna show you that's the other camera case that turned out much better. This actually looks like marble and it's actually kind of cool. It's, it's really not bad, but you're not gonna get the piston effect. There's just not enough surface area. Let me go grab that other one. Oh wait, before I do that, the next thing you wanna do with this, sorry, you want to run this under hot water, not boiling hot, just tap water, a little bit to the left, you know, not smoking hot, until all the slimy shit's off. Now, be careful, if you touch it too much, you might, oh, actually, it's pretty good. Stayed on it pretty nice. Yeah. Wow, good. Um, yeah, run it under warm water for like three or four minutes, and that'll get the slimy shit off, let it dry, then you can clear coat it. I'm going to go grab that other one, and uh, I'm not even going to use this. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the other one and show you what a better better film looks like. Hang on. Bam, and we're back. Now, this one, the clear coat isn't dry on it yet, um, but just to give you an idea, maybe you can see this. Um, this is more of a uh, flamey type of dip. Turned out really, really, really nice. Um, I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, but there's no real design. It's just a flame. There, there's like these different colors and stuff. I probably should have done that in a darker base coat instead of white. It would have made it pop a little bit better. Maybe do it in a red or something. I don't know. Uh, that part I'm still experimenting with. Now, one of the tricks you can do is take your film and lay it over something of the color you think. Like, when we put this over Yoda, I know Yoda's green. I'm colorblind. But you can see the green shining through there, like I said earlier. And that will probably actually look better. Um, and same thing with this. This I should have done the same thing with, but I'm just experimenting. I don't even know if I'm going to use that or not. Uh, it's still pretty cool though. I did do a frame in a couple, a couple frames in Hydro Dips. I did a Mocha JJ, did a couple other ones, and I'm not going to show them just yet, but they turned out really, really cool. Um, and it worked great. So remember, rinse that nasty shit off. Now, if you're doing a frame, one of the things I do recommend, you're probably going to fill up a big tub, okay? After you dip and you pull out your frame, take your tape frame out, and then take some paper towels and skim it over the edge or over the top of the water, and that will pull out all of the little, you know, paint ghosts that are in there. Uh, the other thing I saw somebody else do was use a little fishing minnow net, you know, when you get the fish out of your aquarium and shit, and just kind of skim it like you do a pool. It pulls the shit right out. So, bam, that's it. Let me think if I'm missing anything. I think uh, they have the, you can buy the skins or the films with the activator, usually 20 bucks. You get a meter, usually. Um, and uh, that's for 20 bucks. But usually if you just buy the film, it's like $8 or something like that. They have this stuff on Amazon. Um, it all pretty much works the same way from what I've seen, okay? Now, eBay actually has a better selection because obviously there's a lot more people selling this stuff on there. So um, check out eBay, type in Hydrofilm or Hydro Dip films and you'll just get zillions and zillions. you want skulls they got skulls they got breast cancer awareness they got you know fucking everything but the patriot flags so bam i hope that helps if you guys have any questions i'll do my best to answer them i'm not an expert on it but the frame that i did turned out really really nice this one actually turned out exactly the way i wanted it need to hit it with more clear coat um but other than that yeah it's i think i got a handle on it make sure you build the frame that part's the important bit otherwise it should just go bam and just dissipate so happy easter guys keep shine side up bam until next time stay cool bam jj hope you like fishing bam jj bam jj nothing like fishing